Yo, welcome back to Stay Silent Public Radio. We're on episode 12, 13? 11. 12? No, 11. we are not, Jay. It's 11. It's 11. We'll we'll confirm what episode no, we are it's on. It's definitely episode 11. We're on DK episode 11, but I think we put out three episode sevens, if you're asking me, so. It's definitely episode 11. Welcome back. I'm Sabrina. I'm here with two of my great friends. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's your name? Yeah, who, who are you? Uh, you don't know. I'm Hill Holla. Hey. H-I-L-H-O-L-L-A on all socials. Hey. And we got... This guy. Yeah, uh, today I'm going by now. Uh, Jay, where's Nasty? <laughs> what were you about to go by? Uh, no, you know, like every episode you'd be like, oh. You got a different name. Different. But today you're just Jay. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. I feel like this is so cool because we've never had a third person with us before. And so we're excited. That means it's a special episode, y'all. And um, we're talking 2012. We're talking 2012, guys. Glorious year. Very pivotal. Yeah. Very, very pivotal year. We thought it was important to kind of have a podcast where we discuss this year. That means a lot to stay silent. This is our 10th year of celebrating Stay Silent, which means we're a decade in. But I feel like the year that we were founded has a lot to do with like how we came to be and even the things that we're still doing to this day. And we're hosting a special edition of Eggs Over to celebrate our 10 years. And it's going to be eggs over 2012. And so we thought, why not get the three of us together? We were at the table in 2012 doing the same shit. That's a fact. So we're here to have that conversation. YouTube wars. YouTube wars Yo, for real. Facts. <laughs> Yo, I, I always judge people on what YouTube videos they know and don't know. Oh, for sure. Like, if you've never mm-hmm. seen Scarlet Takes a Tumble, if you've never seen the TV host laughing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> crazy voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you never classics, seen that. Classics. Like, it's like, kind of like yeah. Vine, I guess, right? Like for Vine, sure, people sure. who know certain Vines, it's like you can judge them on that. Or even like Tumblr stuff. It's just, it's just I know where your frame of reference is, so I can yeah. I can joke here with you right. or there with you. Fact. It's actually fun that, that you bring up the Vine thing. Not You know, we're going to get off topic. Already? Already. <laughs> you bring up the Vine thing because the other day I had posted uh, blocking out the haters Vine. Yeah. And a lot of people were hitting me up about that Vine. But then Rico, shout out to Rico, he posted another classic that... I think on a later episode, we have to talk about top five vines of all time. For sure. Because his, a lot of people did say that that, that was a, a top. What a, vine was it? It was the one was like, uh, is, I'm a, can you bring a, a girl for my, for my friend, for my boy? And it's like, is he cute? Then he looks at he looks at his friend who's like a Man, ugly. So a lot a lot of people agreed yeah. across gender lines that, <laughs> that sure. was Yo, I, I feel like the world hasn't been the same since we lost Vine. No. Honestly, when Vine went under, like we didn't even understand like startups no. or media companies. We were just no. like, "Why the fuck are they closing this we're like, shit?" Damn, that's, <laughs> we love that's this. Messed up, man. <laughs> you know what? It was too much for the joy of humanity, <laughs> and sure. the companies couldn't make enough money off of it, so they had to shut it down. But you know, you know what's interesting when you think about this stuff. Like, I guess even in the context of 2012, mm. like you rewind, and you think about. I want to take it back to Twitter, like when Twitter first became a thing. Mm. So this is. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a yeah I'm a freshman in college, fucking Facebook is booming. You need a fucking email address college, for college email. to be to be on Facebook. Your auntie wasn't on there. <laughs> Your mom ain't asking you to make an account. None of that, right? It's lit. You promoting parties. Everything's booming on Facebook. <laughs> then this Twitter thing comes Twitter thing comes along. And it's like a select few people on there. Still a sacred land. People's asking people, yo, what you doing? What you doing later tonight? Right on the timeline. Yeah, yeah. It's all in the open, right? We're ta- hashtag topics. Wild topics. topics. But I remember at that time, you would ask somebody, you'd be like, yo, you on Twitter? They're like, y'all don't even be on the internet like that. Like the extent of the internet at that point for the average person or our average friend around the way was like, yo, I use AIM and then I might, I don't even buy stuff on internet. Like I don't, sure. I don't have eBay. I don't have, there's no Depop. It's none of this. So Twitter was like the first of convincing people like, yo, get on, like, yo, get on this. Cause before that it was like MySpace, and that would be the extent of where we at. Then Facebook, then we get Twitter. Then Twitter, I feel like opened the floodgates like, Everybody's on on the fucking internet now. Yeah. Everybody got an opinion. Everybody's saying something, but it's still not really visual. Like I remember, like prior to that, not everybody like 
if you spoke in memes and gifs, like people don't even know how to pronounce them words. People saying memes, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Jerk, <laughs> like, like you know what I'm saying. Like it was, right. it was a very weird time. Yeah, they had the like, um, what were the the Twitter like to upload Twitter on Twit photos pick. on Twitter? You need TwitPic and like shuff, shuffle. Shutterfly or yeah, all yeah, these like it was, a, it was a photo book. It, it was a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was really a process. Was, and you had to like really be like savvy yeah. to like and be dedicated. good on it. Yeah, dedicated. For sure. So then, you know, so it's not very visual. Yeah. So we had, you know, like at least not in the way that we look at we look at the world now, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the most interesting thing when you when you think about that time period, like leading up to that, because it's almost like everybody's catching up to speed. Like, prior to that, like, when you think about, at least for me, when I think about influence, you think about the way people dress, the type of music people listen to, you know, like, Shots to It's The Real, and um, they're doing a, the Blog Era podcast right now, which is really an overlap of this period. Like, they're talking about, like, 20, 2007 to maybe... 2014. 2014, mm -hmm. 2015, right? But in the first few episodes they've dropped, it's, you know, it's kind of laying the land of, of this period where it's like, yo, not everybody is on a blog website. Fact. Like, people don't even know. The average person could not tell you what Not Right is, what mm -hmm. Two Dope Boys is. So think about the artists, the music, all this stuff that we're listening to. It was a very small, at least in Rhode Island or in New England, a sure. very small group of people that were connected through these yeah, it was, things. Yeah, it was still mixtapes and hands to hand, hand to hand at that time. Mm -hmm. So you really had to be on the internet, on those message boards, wow. the Kanye Tudor, the Star Trek board, Nike, Nike Talk. Talk, yeah, and, and uh, this Box Den, like you had mm, to be on those Box sites Den. to really know that stuff. And, and, and yeah, and it's funny because I felt like each message board or each space had their own personality of person. That's why you laughed when I said Box Den. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Box Den, they, those are those are like yeah. shout out to our friends that were on Box Den. Yeah, those, yeah. Those, are, those are some wild. Those are some wild guys. Mm -hmm. But but it was it was funny because. So when you look at like when Twitter comes along, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, I remember you would see like like Nike Talk was like his own cult on Twitter mm -hmm. at this time, right? And the for me, the first mixtape that I remember, like the turning point, like the first cultural turning point that I remember was when Wiz Khalifa drops Cushion OJ. 100%. Right? 100%. Nike Talk had Twitter lit. Like, the yeah. only reason... I think, I think Twitter broke that day. Like, yeah. I think it was the first time, like, the servers were, like, overloaded. <laughs> you couldn't tweet. It, it, no, we, no, go ahead. I was say, that day, what, to me, was the... It was like, all right, the culture has shifted and mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, now, from that point on, it's like, yo... Yeah, we now, have, for, for those that might not understand, what do you, like, what do you want to expand on that? No, like, you can say what you're saying. Shift? Like... Because I... Because from what I look at it, it's more of, like... People were like, what's going on over there? Exactly. So everybody kind of got on just to see what was going on, just to be nosy and figure yeah. out exactly. how you just stayed. It's like before that day, it's like BK, like before Cushion OJ, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, for AK, sure. like after Cushion OJ, because that was like a moment. You do, I like Cush, I like yeah. OJ, what's, what's going on over <laughs> yeah, there? Yeah, exactly. You know, so that really, I feel like that, that definitely was a, a pivotal moment. And I think too, like it's important to note all of this because the way we consume things today, this feels so normal. But like in real sure. time, we were seeing the shift of, you know, culture being very regional, like the way we learn things. The way, it was like through radio, through mass media, through colleges, through the, the campaigns were very regional. Like it was it was targeted. If you were in certain places, the mixtapes were being dropped off there. It was a, an actual hand to hand like guerrilla campaign. And then it became corners of the Internet. That we were learning from. So yeah, even sure. once you got online, it's like the same way you could see a group of people, but like they're from New York. You saw a group of people on Twitter, like they're from Nike Talk, they're from Box End. Like you understood even by the words they were using, the hashtags they were using, sure. like the types of outfits they were wearing. And it really showed like community growth on the internet. I, I remember, and this is this is also like I feel like another marker pre to 2012. When Drake first came out, so far, so far gone comes out. So I used to work at Expressions on Broad Street. That's like right in the middle of the hood in Providence. For, for anybody who's not from Rhode Island that don't know where that's at, right? And for us, like we would play Drake's music and they'd be like, yo, y'all listening to that college music. Because oh, this sure. is like, I'm at you. That's where ride. Backpack really, like the term came 100%. from. It's college music. It's like, it's like, yo, like that's that college music. Like we not really on, like we not on that. We don't listen to that. We listen to Gucci Mane. Like 
they're not they're not fucking with any of this Drake stuff. So it's yeah. it's even crazy now to look in 2023 like Drake is yo know, the 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 biggest artist, one of the biggest artists or the biggest rapper in the world yeah. too. And at that time it was like a very small niche thing. For sure. He was smart though cuz he put himself in all those different nice. worlds. Like everybody has their favorite Drake like mm-hmm. whether it's Heartbreak Drake, French Drake, yeah, Dominican Drake, <laughs> Jamaican Drake, pushing work know, Drake, you know, backpack Saving little women, brother Drake. Like literally. everybody has their favorite Drake, so mm-hmm. that's that's really he had the cheat code. Mm-hmm. So, so to me, that that was the interesting thing, though, right? Mm-hmm. Is so we set that scene, you see where the world's at at that time, right? Mm-hmm. And then for me, the way that I describe 2012 is like when the worlds collided, and mm-hmm. I think. The main reason that I look at it like that is because of Instagram. Mm. Because a lot of us started to get... Like, for me, I got on Instagram in October 2011, mm-hmm. right? Same. Mm-hmm. And I think most of us kind of in and around that time, which is funny because that's Howard Homecoming. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that, that's yeah, how, yeah, so, yeah. So, so the, uh, in our friend group, yeah. It, yeah. So no, that's Howard Homecoming. Mm-hmm. It's the first time we really go into D.C. for, for Howard Homecoming. Mm-hmm. And we're all like seniors in college about to, we're either about to graduate, some of us have already graduated, it's like we're about to be out of school. So when it comes to the three of us, that's like literally pivotal time, like we're stepping into the world for yeah, the first time. Yeah, that's definitely a transitional period. Mm-hmm. So at that time, at that time, so you see it, boom, it's, it's 2011, and that's why I said, like, it's not really a visual world yet, right? Because I, I remember, and you know, I'm, I'm, throwing my, I'm gonna throw my shit out there. Mm-hmm. I remember... Uh, someone that I was dating around that time, <laughs> they said to me, they said, oh, are, are you on Instagram sitting around, uh, sitting across candle, uh, candlelit dinners or something like that? And that was like, oh, you know, like that was like, like I'm getting caught up from a picture on the internet. Yeah, like what? <laughs> that's, how, that's how I found out about Instagram. <laughs> Somebody called me and was like, yo, are you cooking right now? And I was like, wait, what you mean, bro? Mm. <laughs> so this is like, you know, like at that time, you didn't even think think about yeah the for sure things through that lens. lens you know like yeah. it was just like yo what yeah it was literally like before then somebody had to take a card out of a digital camera put those photos <laughs> on their computer or like connect it with the usb download them upload them to a photo on fa- album on facebook and tag you in yeah. order for that shit to be something that like crossed your mind you showing your age right and now I, yeah. but i feel like it's so important <laughs> we say these things because it went yeah. like this yeah and yeah. now it where we so are it's so now. normal no and instagram like, story no snapchat and obviously like a lot of people listening to this have lived this but i feel like it's important to kind of set the scene because 2012 even in like in our own lives right we're graduating school we're back in Providence where a lot of the perspectives of like nightlife and music are still through this older lens where they're not for catching sure. up yet. Sure. They're not They're not even checking for blogs. Blogs are a few years in. They're not checking for artists that are not on the radio. And we're back home like, so we got to go to New York. Like, especially like, you know, being out here and the stuff you like is, is not being catered to you. So like a lot of people think it's like regular stuff to see it now. But it was a point where it's like, yo... You only getting serviced like one type of way Period. In, these, in these clubs and mm-hmm. just going out in general. And, and I, even radios, like we use, how often was the argument about like radio not representing what people wanted? But the funny thing is that's always been the argument yeah. and it will always be the argument. Right. There's no way it's ever going to change where everybody's going to be satisfied with the radio. So it's yeah. funny that people think, oh, well, you know, they don't support it, bro. We've been saying this for years. Yeah. Bro. And even, but I think especially at that time mm-hmm. where we are now, like you don't hear a lot of people, unless you're an artist and you're looking for more avenues to get your music out, general people aren't like, damn, yo, the radio's whack. Nobody listens to radio. For like sure. it's not even a part of somebody's purview anymore where yeah. back then it was a part of people's daily lives. Like, People listen to The Breakfast Club on the radio. But you know what's funny? <laughs> is people say that, like, oh, I don't listen to the radio. But if they was on the radio, they would be like, yo, I'm, I'm on, on the, the radio. radio. <laughs> like, it's so funny how it, that would change. Right. But, no, it's so true. But to me, that's the interesting thing. Like, yeah, you know, when you lay out, I guess, from a technology communication standpoint, how the world, like, we didn't even think about, like, you're, you're, like right now, we're so hyper aware of, you know, anything you do can end up on the internet. Oh, for sure, right. for sure. So you have that aspect of it, and then you also have like the cultural aspect that I feel like Sabrina's touching on, where it's like uh, our cue points, our reference points, the things we understand, the things we like. How it's like it's all very, it's all very segmented. Like, mm-hmm. yo, if I want to go find this type of music, I go here. If I want to go to this type of event, I go here. Like you think about even in 2012, you know, the idea of a brunch party 
was like, yo, what? It was a new <laughs> idea. idea. Brunch. People were still yeah. going to church. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yo. Which people still go to church. However, they do go to brunch after. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was just straight brunch now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, Yo, yeah, brunch was funny. a foreign concept. Like, what do you mean I'm gonna drink <laughs> champagne and orange juice and, no. and eat and listen to music? That doesn't make sense. 2012 was the birth of King of Diamonds. So, yeah, so, the, the <laughs> live on Sunday, King of Diamonds Monday. So, so you think about it, even from so we're talking about like our interests and, and the things that we're in, but then you think about it. For me, I'm already now. I'm already a few years in as a DJ. I've gone through the college parties. Mm-hmm. We've produce parties that are like, you know, we've done the college party, we've done Oktoberfest, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've doing Joe Vaughn's, we're doing Tantric, so, you know, so we're doing parties that are ranging from like 200 people to like 800 people, right? And Hill's blogging at this time, blogging, yeah. interviews, if you actually, had a blog. Actually, I, I kind of stopped because I had dropped music this that, 2012. In 2012, so that was That's the first, first year I first dropped my, my project, so. Shout that to Skino. You know, shout to Skino, but that was like the transition. But I still was very tied into that world. So, yeah. I, so I did the, that was the advantage of being an artist is I already knew how to use the internet right. and the spaces to be in. Mm-hmm. So when you, for me, it's like when you when you think about that, like that time, right? And how how we consumed and just being like the type of things we were looking at that we were trying to feed ourselves, right? So like when it comes to when it comes to the parties, you know, for me being in a college party, I remember there was a point like, yo. Like, let's say you want to play some down south music, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, OJ the Juice Man, fucking Gorilla Black, mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. Uh, them boys, all that shit, right? Mm. Titty Boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, you know, people, it was like, yo, we looked at, oh, that's that down south music. We don't, you know, like you might have the set, but it was looked at as like, oh, that's going to start violence in the function, right? Or no, you're it snapping. Did. It, it did. Yeah. It did. No, it did. It you're did. either dancing or you fighting. It definitely snapping did. Snapping or but, fighting. But I you think the, the interesting thing that was happening even party-wise in 2012 was like, see, in college, like us being like going to college, we were exposed to so much different music that, yo, we all go, you know, we'll go to parties and like we didn't look at it, necessarily look at it as like, Oh, this is music that's gonna make East Side and Chad Brown fight, or this, yeah, yeah. or you know what I'm sure. saying? Like we really didn't think about but, it. But I that. think it's not even just going to college; it's just like we were yeah, traveling, we were going places. Yeah. So you know, we would go to Philly for the weekend, we'll mm-hmm. go to Miami for the weekend, Santos and New yeah, York. Yeah, so we're understanding, you know, what music is hitting in other places and bringing it back home. Yeah, so. and I feel like that difference that we experienced in New England was that because of like the lack of spaces at the time and like lack of curators that were hap- like we just didn't have those types of functions here. Sure. So when you'd go to New York there were actual like DJs and people curating those events. So you got to start you started to see like what a curated perspective looked like at a mm-hmm. function. We never had stuff like that. But but you know what's crazy is I I think we always had the idea of it but just didn't yeah. know it was possible. So to go somewhere and Fact. see it in action was like oh, okay this can be done. This can be you know done. What I'm, saying? I, I, I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. I, I think my my first experience of that and this is where I also think this is like a pivotal moment in New England history looking back that enough people don't really talk about and I feel like you you have to be there to realize that it's two things uh karma loop on Newberry Street um Fact. when they would be doing like different functions pop-ups and, and I remember there was one day specifically Theo was performing and I was DJing for Theo and you know all of us go it's like like all the homies is, is going right yeah and the ironic thing about this day, I always remember like uh, Max, who has GBF now, Gangsters by Flowers, was there. So all these different people that grow to become different people in the scene, mm-hmm. they're all kind of just in, in this room, right? But, you know, I think that was the ill thing about that Carmelo space was it, everybody felt comfortable there. It was like a home. All the creatives went there and, and connected and got to network. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that was just one of those perfect spaces. Facts. And, and but so to me, the dope part about that was mm-hmm. like before Theo's DJ is like, I mean, D, Theo's performance, like, yo, play some music. So this is like, oh shit, I get to play like, Whatever. you know, this isn't like a party. This isn't yeah, a party. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm not like the intention is not to like get leave, people to dance, dance yeah, yeah, or leave yeah. here sweaty. It's like, yo, we just playing fly stuff, right? And then also at that time, shout to to Mills who goes at as Mar- Max October. Um, he's doing. Uh, 
wants to do like the Good Friday parties over at uh, Paragon. Paragon, Paragon yeah. So you know we're clicked up. We're all we're all doing that. It's like me and Theo's DJing. Hill got people coming through. Sabrina got people coming through. Fucking Bros is inviting people. Everybody in the friend group is kind of just like, yo, this is where we're at. To, this is where we're at for tonight. Sure, Dr- sure. Drewski, Drewski's still here. He's not even in LA yet. Everybody's kind of like, yo, let's come together. And to me, that was the first space before 2012, before we're doing Stay Silent, where it's like, yo, yeah, we're going to play the stuff that you typically hear in a club. But we're also going to play this stuff that, you know, we just listen to. You're not going to hear a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, I also think, like, again, if this is your first time hearing this and you're just hearing a bunch of names and places that maybe don't mean anything to you, I think the key is that 2012 was definitely a space of just, like, all of, like Jay said, the worlds were colliding. Like, there, all the people that you're naming are people who have continued to go on into like creative spaces, have continued to like grow through, I think the lens of what happened in this time, having the awareness of like, I'm, I have to go out and learn what I like on my own. It's not going to show up in my news feed. It's not going to show up on my story. There's yeah. like, we came from an era of like, you did have to know somebody. You did have to ask a question. There was research involved, even in this in this time. Like blogs, yeah, you might have been on the blog, but there's still like a level of curation to it. For sure. Because there's, sure. there's a thousand posts a day. And that's it, when we started it, seeing that it shit. It was also, you know, creating that trust. Mm. I think that's where a lot trust of that stuff key. got lost because... It was like, I trust this person's opinion or their taste, so Say I know that. they're going to put me on to something where it's kind of a free-for-all mm-hmm. these days. Yeah. I think it was like the era of like democratizing. Like, there were people... S-A-T word. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> there were people who were the gatekeepers. That term is so overused now, but there sure. were people who understood. They worked at different... What were we saying? No, I love the term gatekeeper because a lot of times it's not even a gate. No, nah, you're <laughs> right. It's like, I actually live here. This is my gate. Yeah, it's like, yo, I'm like, just telling yo, y'all about you can literally here. open that, bro. Like, yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, but if it is a gate, that also means it can be open, right? Like, yeah, exactly. come on, y'all. But I feel like regardless, I, it's a, that was an era where we started to see like people be the people be given the credit for the information that they know. Like that's when an for in sure. I think what would be for considered sure. current day influencers were really coming up. And that's you saw that through streetwear, you saw that through I think there music. was a paper trail. You know, mm-hmm. there was there was a way it could tie back to people and right. stuff yeah. like that. Vlogging. Whether it was vlogging or hashtags, it was like, yo, my my evidence is here. But that, Receipts. that that's also what I think is very interesting about like kind of like about that about that time period. Because Something you guys mentioned earlier was talking about like somewhere like New York about mm-hmm. them having those spaces or having those type of parties. But it's interesting, like when you go and you know hear about different functions that came up or started around that time, whether it's brunch bounce, whether it's Henny Palooza, which becomes Duce Palooza, and then yo know, countless other parties that are going on around the country, collectives like Selection, sure, mm-hmm. around that time. It's interesting because. They, when you talk to, and I've had obviously like we've had the opportunity to actually talk to these people that have, that have started these things, and the biggest thing that that I always take away is they were facing the same thing we were facing Facts. here in Rhode Island. Oh, for sure. So for sure. I feel like a lot of times us being where we're from is like we're like, oh, you know, like in LA they got it all figured out. Right. In New York they got it all figured out. In DC they got it all figured out. Mm. But not nah, really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but 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 mm-hmm. the, but these people, at least these groups of people, were trying to create similar spaces in the. They in had the, something the to say. There was perspective that needed to be shared. And Sabrina always brings this up, and I think is this is something that's very interesting. Is that when you look at a, a lot of these different collectives or parties that started around that 2011, 2012 time, it's like they did go on to dictate what was happening the next 10 years in their cities, right? For so sure. like when you look at Stay Silent getting to, get, getting to 10 years, it's like, well, look at what came from, from Brunch Bounce. Mm-hmm. Well, look at what came from Fool's Gold. And like even think about yeah, like- Yeah, Fool's Gold was 2012 too. Like think about that, like pro- prior to that, right? We wasn't going, I mean, when we were in college, we didn't even think about going to festivals. No. no. Like, we went to Howard Homecoming. No, no. And that was about it. And you wouldn't even call that a sound session. And and then, you know, (laughs) sound session, and you got a couple people go to Miami for spring break. And that was the extent of it. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, and that that was definitely the era of where you started to see, like, DJs actually being able to, like, communicate their role. Obviously, 
right around that time too, the mixtape era into the blog era, we under if you were into mixtapes, you understood the value of a DJ. Mm. But that still was like a segmented world. Like although it was, you know, in high school we knew everybody who was into mixtapes knew, but really if you were asking one out of ten, like there was at least half of the group that's like, oh, DJ Drama, like, I've heard the name, but I don't really know what he does. Or like sure. Green Lantern, I heard the name. If you knew and you were into music and that level, word, but if you didn't, it wasn't like just general information. Where I think now, we're 10 years removed from this, 12 years removed from this, and people do know the names of DJs, like, on a one-to-one. Oh, for sure. For sure, definitely. So that was the birth of that. Because we saw, that was like, bow- I mean, even as you were mentioning Fool's Gold, or um, brunch bounce. That's when Skrillex and and uh, what's was, his was, name? Ventro around that. Ventro is right yeah, around cool. this. It, yeah. it, but to me, I I I think there's a negative and a positive in that mm-hmm. because I think it, in that time where it's like I like you look at like like right you look at what like like to me Kanye and good music was the pinnacle right. of this culture. <laughs> They're that like the about. exclamation point at the end of 2012. It was like 2012 exclamation point because he was such a reason. He was m- one of the main reasons for a lot of what happens in this time. He, he's this like DJ, sure, this sure. music. He's this like me. Like when you talk about fashion. like when, when Drake says, I, I forget like the exact line, yeah. but it's like the hipsters and the hood niggas got to come together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yep. that to me. Uh, Didn't Push say this uh, about the clips? No, yeah, I, I mean know. that's what there's a lot of people. There's a few. Yeah, all right. But, 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 but I just had to double check with the. I got, I got my <laughs> push. I'm just tea. saying that that is a that is a Drake line when the hipsters yeah, gotta yeah. get along with the hood niggas, right? Mm-hmm. But to me, that's really what like you think about like that crew summer year. It's like yo, you got Chief Keef on the same album as fucking Q-Tip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yes, that's fucking. If you think about it, that's fucking insane. There's mm-hmm. not a lot of people that can pull that off. Fact. But the but the why and it made sense, right? But the why. I think the wild part about that, though, is when these worlds started to collide, there was a little bit of a nasty era that came from that. Like, for me, like, the EDM, electronic, yeah, like, it yeah, got, yeah, it got yeah, very, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it got very weird in that time. Like, for example, like, I remember when, yo, the first time we hear ASAP Rocky, right? And we see the Peso, Peso video, we mm-hmm. see the, the Purple Swag, it's like, Oh shit! It's these New York dudes mm-hmm. on this like UGK down south, three six mafia type vibe. Clearly, so, like influenced by Dipset. Yeah, so we understand this, right? Yep. But by the time the album comes out, it's like Skrillex, Wild for the Night, like like that song yeah. to me is that was, a, that was a label play. You know, it had to be. It was, a, but I feel like it's also representative of like, well, how do we fit into these festivals? Yeah, and we had Cray Sean happening. Like, uh, that, that was a thing. There was, I feel like, Definitely was a and thing. I do think that's is the fashion was indicative of some of this, where like Celine is making the straight up bootleg Air Force. Like there's yeah, all the yeah, Givenchy yeah, yeah. stuff, CDG. I mean, obviously, a lot of this was mixed in and brought in by design, by like hip hop artists. But I think this is around the time where a lot of the communi- like the conversation starts to be like, but this mm-hmm. is our shit. Yeah, like we're mixing, you know, the Easy Two with like. They're all wearing like leather pants or whatever. I feel like it was a it was a point of like yeah you you, you kind of you kind of just blew my mind too though like when you talking about the fashion stuff because mm-hmm. isn't that the easy two yeah that was the easy yes, two yes, year yes. so when you think about it yeah. right so like we talking about like yeah we all if you do the timeline right we get on Instagram late 20, 2011, right yeah. twenty twelve all this is, is coming out. To me, the Yeezy 2 is another marker of a culture. The Red it, October. Fashion, like, it was like, yo. Red October. Yeah, everything changed out there. Because at that time, I had transitioned from working just in the store at Expressions to being a buyer slash with marketing, right? And Expressions is a sneaker retailer. Was. Was, 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 was a R.I.P. Was a... Pour one out. <laughs> right? out what are you pouring out? What, what liquor is Cristal, it? Cristal, they got Cristal. paid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Them niggas got paid. We pouring uh, out champagne. <laughs> but um, it, like, if you think about Jimmy Jazz... Yeah, it about. was like that for this for the New England region. There was like up 50 stores between Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and, and damn, Connecticut. Damn, it was clo- yeah, close to 50. Close to 50. Damn. Just to set the scene, also black-owned. So... Got to get tired on here. But when you, oh, facts. When you think when you think about that, that time, before that, I remember. You wait in line, you get a sneaker. Even before that, right? Mm-hmm. When I used to work inside the store, you would never see a white kid from the suburbs mm. come in the store mm. buying a Jordan. He came by accident if he does No, come. and if He's they like, did, fuck. it was like, I've seen this multiple times. They, you know, they popped their head in. Yeah. 
they kind of feel the, you know. Check the energy, check yeah. the temperature. Scared. And, and they left, right? <laughs> yeah. And, but also. They, they usually went to save on. But there was a lot of stuff. <laughs> but, but there was a lot of stuff that we, that we wore in the hood that they didn't have access to, right? For they sure. didn't even think was interesting. They wasn't even in the world. The Yeezy you know? two, the Yeezy two comes out. That's the first sneaker we have to do a raffle for. Wow, that that's was that was the first point. shoe. For that was a raffle? first sneak. Yeah, that was the first shoe we had to. Yo, I created the raffle system at Expressions after the Yeezy two because I was like, yo, this process is stupid. At that time, we had people emailing us yeah. their shoes, so we had to go through every oh, single email. email. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, this is dumb. Like, why would we do it like this? Mm-hmm. That's why I never got any shoes. It, yeah, you know, <laughs> so 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 you so you think, but think about that. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. that, the easy two comes out. Everything's going crazy now. Mm-hmm. Everybody want all these things, all this shit, all this shit's going on, and now the worlds are collide. The worlds are collided, mm-hmm. and everybody. Like, it's like we all on the same shit now. Everybody mm-hmm. want the same shit. For sure. And I mean, that's kind of to circle back on what you were talking about, like the, the, the nasty era. It's like everything had to come together and then you kind of pick out the good parts and there's going to yeah. be some stuff that's left over mm-hmm. and it might not be as favorable as the stuff that we like, mm-hmm. but you know, that's yeah. just the nature of it. Because there's, there's, somebody's getting paid. When, when this stuff happens, yeah. somebody's going to make the money. So do, do, y'all, do y'all think though, because now it got me thinking is, is that the point where like, Obviously, hip hop culture was global before that, but mm. does it? Because like right now, like you see, uh, like for example, if you look at like Cortez in in London, what they're doing right now, right? Mm-hmm. And like that being a cultural, like a cultural touch point. Like even in 2012, like we weren't really checking for what was going on. Like you know, like for us, like when we look, we think about like London, we think about Paris. It's like for London, it's like oh SAS because we was dipset. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, but that's right. it. Really, but that wasn't a part of like our mainstream hip hop culture. Like now, when we talk about, you have to add them in the conversation. Mm-hmm. You have to add all these places in the conversation. Yeah. So it's it's interesting because I feel like Kanye. And all them, like, they ushered that Virgil, Ben Trill. Mm -hmm. Like, they made it a global... But I I also think it kind of going on with the the Instagram thing is now now we're seeing these people that are over in London or in these other places. And it's like, oh, shit, he he got Prada on, he got Gucci on. We're wearing the same stuff. So maybe I need to listen a little closer and see Mm -hmm. what they're talking about. So I think that kind of helped where we could visualize what was going on over there as opposed to just the music. And they had their own wave. Like, on top of it, it wasn't like those like Instagram showed us that they weren't just trying to be American. And I feel like through mm. our lenses, we always had this feeling. And I mean, I think well, we thought we were the only people that was doing exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. all three of us, obviously as first generation Americans, like we have a different experience of that. Cause we have cousins in different countries, all that. But I feel like even that we, I don't think I knew my cousins in India were listening to hip hop until I ha- had the internet and I could see what songs they were sharing right. or like what they were on. You know what I'm saying? And you, you know, you know, it's funny. Uh, about that point too though is because I always say like New York like we talk about this with our barber all the time right shout to Todd <laughs> New York was Instagram like for uh, like before like when we were younger New York was the place that you went and it's like oh they got the sneakers they got mm-hmm. this this they they set the tone they set the tempo right mm-hmm. and I feel like 2012 was the year that the veil was unpulled because yo, you have Instagram. We could see all over the world now. We yep, could see all over sure. the world. We could see the parties. We could see the music. We could visualize. And then other parts of the world, yo, we finally got to tell our story on our terms. So you think about that, like even because when people talk about Rhode Island, right? They talk about stay silent. They're like, yo, stay silent, man. Y'all the first to ever do this or to ever do that. And sometimes, you know, there are stuff that I agree. Like nobody has done it at this scale or at this level, but you know, we always had crazy parties in Rhode Island. We always yeah. had, sure. like, you For know sure. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. shout to Sean Medina, shout to DJ Buck, all these people that have been doing this, Big Dad, you know, like clubs like Big Daddies, Confetti's, yeah. all this, but they didn't have a tool like Instagram to show the world. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. It was a hidden gem in the same ways that we we're talking about all of these things were in some ways hidden gems. Like you knew somebody who had partied in Providence, so you go to Jovan's for First Fridays. Or like you knew some situation that was happening, but if you didn't know, you just didn't know. And you know, a lot of this it's a whole nother conversation, but a lot of those promoters like 
they they were playing for what was on the front of their jersey. So mm. they were never it never really was, oh, it's my party. It was mm. always, you gotta come to this spot. So they never really got to get their proper shine for being that promoter That's and, uh, and cur- curating those spaces. That's very true. I feel like too, 2012, like when we think about, you know, all of the regional stuff that happened at that time, we were just talking about Yay. That was cruel summer. Mm. Which means mercy, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, Mercy's yeah, yeah, yeah. Later in the year, but that yeah. even that's that mercy. that's another but that was on that was on Cruel Summer. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was yeah. another sure. moment too. Mercy, um, that was a uh, devil. That was Cruel Summer was crazy. The Cruel Summer was was, le- was leather pants. Nah, that was, that, that, Cruel Summer was pretty much like the victory lap of my but, beautiful. And yeah. Good Fridays was also was it that year? Was before, before the that. year before that? Okay, yeah. that was 2011. That, that led up to okay, my beautiful. but I, but it's it's wild because I like we keep going. Even we talking about 2011. Mm-hmm. It set the tempo. Yeah, oh, yeah, the whole thing. It was it's, all a breeding ground of one another. But when I, so when I was thinking about the music that was happening there, you mentioned ASAP, which obviously Dipset, but ASAP was our gen. They were our age. It was like our peers creating a music collective in New York. That was new. That was yeah, new. Yeah. And then same on they, the. They had just got out of the super gangster era in New York. Yeah, yeah. that 100%. was like the the reign of fifty. Kind of was like the end of that. And people were, and then French was coming up, like mixtape yeah. French, mixtape um, Vado, mixtape like Vado. Wow. We were dealing with. We were dealing with. Not me being like we were dealing with a lot of rappers <laughs> on mixtapes, but I feel like when you look at ASAP, you know they were us in their own way, trying to like make a way for a new sound, trying to shake up some shit and be like, y'all might be sleeping on New York for this and that, but like, this is what New York's about to us. For sure. And then on the West, it was Odd Future. Yep. yep and they exactly. were the young boys on the West that, and young people on the West yeah. that were like shaking shit up on that side. And I think that's an important story to tell because yeah, Ye was like trailblazing that, right? But we see where we are now, 10 years later, and it's like, you see where Frank is. You see where Tyler is. You see where ASAP culturally, like ha- what he has been represented as for the last 10 years. You see Kendrick Lamar. In, yeah. in, that so, was Section it was section 80? No, nah, th- I mean, nah, that, that, that was 2012 was Good Kid, Mad City. Good Kid, Mad City. So Section 80 set that up. Yep, and yeah. Top Dog was like, that was the they year that not, it was formed. Yeah. Absol- like everyone is moving. This is schoolboy era. So we're looking at like, these are our peers. We're turning 23, 24. We're young, and these are the, the our peers that are making music. Now we're 10 years in, and you see like what the trailblazing that was done, obviously with Ye at the helm of it, but... I feel like it's important to note just also, how much we were all moving. Also, something I think that's interesting that that you and Hill kind of touched on with A- with ASAP, even when you, you t- even talk about our future, is that it was showing a new perspective to these cities, right? Because like when we seen ASAP, I mean that might that's not necessarily like you even had New York people saying like. Uh, like New York niggas, we don't dress like that. We yeah, don't, we for don't sure. Do, Weirdo we don't, rap. Yeah, we don't. Mm-hmm. We don't do yeah. that. And LA, like you look at our future. I mean, they were like <laughs> on some whole other shit from what from what LA's like that super gangster rap that LA that LA. They were was LA in. kids. Like they were skating LA. They kids. were skateboard like skate park kids. So, they were Pharrell's kids. <laughs> yeah. but, but that's what I think is really interesting, though, is because even you know, even with us, like we were different than the how Providence might be perceived or Rhode Island might be perceived into, into oh, the world. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's so, everyone being like, y'all are from Rhode Island, right? <laughs> Every day. We're like, yes, we are. So it, the, <laughs> In 2012. So that, to me, that, I don't know. Like, it, it's interesting because it was, it was a turning point, but it also you've seen so many people get be able to get their perspective yeah. off. And, and, and now it's like, yo, like I'm thinking about it in, in 2023, like, yo, all of this shit is normal. All of yeah. this, like you know what I mean? Sure. Like it's harder to make your perspective different. It's that's why now it's more important to tell like an individual story again. For sure. Like it's really sure. important to I mean, it's always been that important, but right, we want to show somebody what Providence feels like versus a different city. Like there's more need to be like, yeah, we all do this, but like we do this again in a way that I think for the last 10 years has been more of a like, we also have festivals, we also have whatever it is, a I, place to get brunch. But you, but you know what's interesting is like I, I think I think now we're and we've talked about this on on the podcast so many times that we're in this homogenous space. Like we're in this space where everything is the same. Like for example, like yo, uh 
like I said, like I put it this: like I said, like your Afrobeat parties is like the new brunch. Like every, everybody got everybody yeah. got the Afrobeat party. Everybody, every city got the brunch. Every city, like it's like sure. everywhere you go has the same reference points now. So like, what is the point of difference? And and can it be different? Like because we grew like in the time that we grew up in, and even looking back in 2012. For sure. We were just getting to a to a space where like we're able to see what's going on in the different corners of the world. Now, every corner of the world is everybody's reference point. So it's I feel like like what how you can't exclude uh like if you're talking to to a kid like in this generation right now that's starting their collective, they're starting their work right now. Their reference point is like yo, I see everything. everything. I yeah, see everything. Yeah, for like, sure. So like for them is like I don't know. If they're looking at being different in the same way, you know, and it's funny because you kind of always have to figure out what's different. You know, it's like, how, what what am I doing that's really separating myself? It's just because I'm not that person that makes me mm-hmm. different, or like, mm-hmm. am I are my frame of reference points different from people? You know, mm-hmm. so I, I think it's important these days of really just finding the right people to work with. I I, I look at DJs a lot. I feel like the DJs are going to really carry like the next couple of years because they're going to be able to dictate the energy of all these like events and parties and things like that and really take a a lead or, or really be in the, the forefront of this mm-hmm. because they're going to be the ones that are connecting all these these different the the reggae tones, the afro beats. Like you're going to have to be able to do all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't just be a hip hop DJ. You can't just be an afro beat DJ cuz mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to move around in these spaces. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see like where they take it because I mean, 2012, you pretty much everybody was a hip hop DJ and you knew yeah. like three or four Spanish songs, one African song, <laughs> yeah. two reggae songs yeah. and then you was done. So I'm I'm interested to see like in these next couple of years like how they they maneuver with that. Yeah, I think too, like when we think about what it means to be different, like Hill was saying, mm-hmm. I I also feel like what happened over the last 10 years is we had to learn that seeing is not experiencing. So mm-hmm. although like a person was starting something now or maybe somebody in their early 20s now, they might have seen the world, but that's not the same thing as experiencing the world. That's not that's the same fact. thing as, you know, touching and feeling different different things. So you might have seen Coachella. You've never been to Coachella. You might have seen, and and obviously seeing is a part of the story, but it's not the full thing. And a lot of how sure. we had the energy to start some shit 10 years ago was because we s- experienced it. And then obviously seeing it, like they, a part of what we said when we like launched Stay Silent and a part of the name at the time was like, yo, people are just taking pictures of their food. Like it's like, Sharing what you were doing was more important than doing what you were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think now not there's the era. there's a lot more like conversation. <laughs> phone and eats first. Phone eats first, but not in an interesting way. <laughs> um, and I feel like because of those fucking filters, the food looked crazy. Yo, that's <laughs> another thing we didn't talk. Yo, <laughs> that cartoon filter had Pawtucket in a chokehold. Yo, yo, the <laughs> and parts the, of Boston. One, one, one thing. I said, well, I say that 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 filter had the hood on smash. The whole hood on smash. But <laughs> that's one thing I think. Looking back, also at, at photos and stuff when uh, 2012, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's like weirdly documented <laughs> because of because, because of, of those. Filters. Because yeah. yeah, we'll have to revisit 2015 as well because we're everybody's half puppy. It's like just videos of people being like flower crowns and just puppies. Yo, because it's I, like I, videos of people at graduation and they're puppy filtered. Because I, because like. I've always, I've always, uh, like on my hard drives and stuff, I save like all the iPhone photos, photos I took, and when I get to that 2012 era, like you start to see like the super crunchy mm-hmm. fucking. I think I have the picture that got you caught up. If you want it for the. For the thing, yeah, but but it's wild. Like when you when you look at that stuff, because I'm like, yo, that's so indicative of that time. Yeah, though. like that, like that filter is grainy. Yo, a mess. Do you remember what you were wearing in 2012? I do. So it's funny because that was like heavy Canadian tuxedo era. Okay, we had a lot of denim, a lot yeah. of denim. Like I yeah. remember, yo, honestly, the first the first Stay Silent event, which was in December of 2012, the art gallery we did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I tell you the exact fit that I had on. I feel like you know yours too. We have pictures. From I that had day. Canadian tuxedo, 
mm-hmm. with uh, for y'all who don't know what a Canadian tuxedo is, it's <laughs> denim on denim, mm-hmm. right? Denim, we're, denim, denim. We're the Yeezy ones uh, with the with big the flex. Uh, with, with the Yeezy ones, and uh, I believe the Animal House floral hat. Mm. That, that you had, it was that, a that, big. That, I, think that, I, had, I think I had the yeah, same. Yeah, hat no, they had, they had sent you two. You gave me one because uh, I'm a real nigga. That's it was why. the big five panel <laughs> era. We had lots of five panel. But that was a that shout was out a, to Johnny Green. You know, more house homies. That was a play clothes era. That was yeah. a lot of things. You were in polo. You still in polo? Still in polo. He was in polo. I got, good, I got chambers on today. Shout out to Curve though. Hey. So, but that. But what think did you about have that. on? Um, what did I have on? Maybe not to that, but in, I in had 2012. 2012 ones. I was wearing heavy black and red ones, mm-hmm. aqua eights, mm-hmm. aqua eights. All of nines dropped that year again. Yo, that yeah. when you talk about that, when you talk again, when you talk about the aqua eights, yo, you gotta go back to Con- you gotta go yo, back yeah, to Kanye. Yeah. Nah, pivotal yo, shoe. That he he yo that outfit because even then like fit picks wasn't really a thing on Instagram. Like, started, yo, though. Yo, being a sneakerhead wasn't a thing. Were, no. People used to be like, why do you have so many shoes Always, back then? always. But now the, look at you. But but that Aqua 8, that Bad, Aqua 8. That was when the brunch booth started, actually. Y'all was <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible, <laughs> Anyways, terrible, we remember. Terrible. But that uh, that Aqua 8 moment was yeah. cr- because I don't even think it, it was a, uh, it was out. It was just like, like it was like day, like him and Don C was on like, that. Yeah, they're like yo, we breaking these out. Yeah. The, the shoe had been a out. lot of Jordans retro that year. That was twenty three years after the fours, the bre- <sighs> uh, black fours. I know those joints were sitting because I got them when I came back from Philly. Yep, mm. and it was I was like I saw them and I was like yeah, I need those. Yep, came home. Walked into the store, tried them on. Them. Remember, you could try shoes on in the mall. <laughs> nah, I don't. <laughs> Not the awkward. The awkward, but that that fit pick. Yeah. Wait, wait, yay with the Aqua Eights. Like I feel like that was another shifted. shifted. Yeah, that was that's my favorite era when he was dressing because he was putting that shit on. Yeah, you know that time was crazy just because we also wore. Um, well, like you said, we could try on shoes, but on Black Friday I could get a pair of Jordans in store. That's on Black Friday, that's a fact. Like I, I had a hard time getting a TV <laughs> than I did getting a pair of cement threes. Like that is nuts. That's so, a fact. So what? What's a brand that you tie to 2012? Like, because obviously Polo, I mean, that Timeless, shit, that's going to yeah, yeah. do everything. You know like, For me, 2012 he, was the first year I bought a designer bag. Hmm. And I, which one was $900, a Philip Lim. Um, ba- and it was because of Push. It was because of, it was because of all of that. Is it was it the, the black and red one? No, nah, it's mm-hmm. the navy blue with the with the zippers in the front. Remember, I used okay. to have a little mustard one that I always wore. I'll show okay. you, and you're yeah, gonna know yeah, exactly yeah, what yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. But like Philip Lim, that was like just the era of like, yeah, CDG, Givenchy, Celine, like the Philip Lim era. Word. But I feel like that was that's one brand I'm always like. I bought it even to the day. I'm like, why the hell did I buy? This? Why was this my first bag? I, 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 it, I was, think it was. You just gotta put your toe in the water, man. Yep. And you figure it out after. I think that's why it's so hard. Like all this shit that happened with Kanye, like in the last year, because he's he was tied into so much stuff. Like he was a part of so many moving parts. It's yeah. like, damn, dog. So it's like even like when I, when I'm you know you having this conversation and you just like yo like for me like yo and when I say when I'm talking about Kanye, obviously you're talking about like mm-hmm. what became Ben Trill, Donda, all yeah. these, like all these guys that had broken. He was like Don pretty C. much at the height of his powers, right? Yeah. Here. yeah. And it was like right at the precipice of like commercial. He was commercially famous, but like he also had like completely just been hip hop superstar. Yeah. So like he's getting Grammy nominee, like Grammy recognition, but it's not. It's like he's still like hip hop's yeah. number one everything. Sure. Yo, nah, that's 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 it's wild. It's kind of wild. That was there. Yeezy coined a whole f- like color palette. Like there were Miami. There was like the Miami Vice color palette. We all knew what the Miami like color palette was, and then there was like Yeezy color palette, oh, which yeah, is that like cucumber sure. green and that that <laughs> red, Fact. like with the black, yep, yeah, yep, the yep. infraredish color. And that's like Nike did so many things in all, that. And all, they were just like, all red sneakers. All red sneakers, like. So you're saying Philip Lim is, but to go and back then to the, the Roshis. So you're saying Philip Lim, nasty. Like, everything is Philip Lim, is what you're saying. <laughs> so you're saying you're saying Philip Lim is. The it just like that's one that encapsulates like specifically 2012. Like I yeah. never went and copped anything else, Philip Lim. Like mm-hmm. I just it was just like that was such an era. I wanted the Givenchy like dog bag with the Rottweiler, with the Rottweiler. on it. Like mm-hmm. I wanted the stars on everything. Like also, also me, I would also say Jeremy Scott. 
Jeremy yeah, Scott. Yeah, I, I, I had some Jeremy Scott pieces, yeah. and then um, a lot of Supreme. I was yeah. doing Supreme, a lot of Supreme. Yeah. That was that was a. Uh, it was like, and that was a great era for Supreme, for because sure. it wasn't the num- like people were not pressed. They like, were starting to get pressed. They were though. starting to yeah. get pressed, but 2012, it yeah. was still like it was a middle area where you could cop. You could still cop. And and because of what came from 2012, you could no longer cop within like two or three years. It's 2012. Not just 2012, but like the years before, but obviously it's, the internet. It's 2012, the Yo MTV, Yo MTV rap, Stussy. Is that? It's that, around there. It's around there. A little, little bit after. It's like 2014. After, but that yeah. was, they were in like Zoomies at that time. So yeah. they, was, they was moving funny. Yes, we did buy those. We all had that drop. Yeah, that was yeah, an amazing I had drop. to. I had to. Me too. Yeah. But 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 even thinking about that, like they thinking about zoomies. thinking about it through zoomies a fashion is a nasty lens. place in general. But 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 look at how much has changed even since then. Like, Shout out to the skater kids who worked at zoomies. Like look at look at look at where even like a Stussy is right now. In For comparison sure. to a Supreme, in, in in terms of like cultural relevance and all that, I feel like you had they had twenty twelve really tested a lot of like that whole era. This whole last ten years has been a very big like it was easy to sell your brand. But I think it was a lot of people, you know, kind of finding their footing where it was like, all right, where do I fit in this space? Mm-hmm. Because like even like how we were talking earlier when uh, things were like regional like geographically, mm-hmm. like now things became regional on the internet where it's like <laughs> you're like looking. For certain, either like aesthetics and just like like for Nike Talk, for example, like that was a certain region, you know, that those Mm -hmm. are all different spaces, and we're looking and we're gonna find different things in those places. So we're not gonna talk about Supreme if we're on box then or whatever. We might be wearing (laughs) black t-shirts or something. Yep, (laughs) (laughs) no, it's true. There was like there's like uniforms, just black Air Force, but that and that is what like that's what 2023 is like. Right on TikTok, it's like mermaid core. You're on one part of the internet, and all they talk about is like I'm scared of TikTok. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't even care about the spine shit. I'm scared because I don't know how to use it. (laughs) We we, we were talking about this. We were actually talking about this. uh, Are either are any of the three of us on TikTok? I'm on TikTok. He got a sneaky TikTok. No, it's not. It's not even sneaky. I'm, 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 yo, you my, doing my, dances? My, it, it, nah. <laughs> what is Jay doing on TikTok? Um, you know, he gotta see what moves I, 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 I gotta see. I, I'm a, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I actually I actually got one post up there too. Yeah. It, it's funny because uh, I haven't I haven't I haven't I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, yeah. but. I'm fucking with it. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, we all have in, engaged with TikTok. I'm not gonna lie, like. I know if I got on TikTok, I'll be great on TikTok. Yeah. But I don't want to be great on TikTok. But, but, like. but, this, but, this, but this, this is my thing. And I think Taurus. I always have to be reminded of this, mm-hmm. right? Because in in 20, for example, in, in 2012, there were people who were like, yo, I'm not getting on this Instagram shit. Man, fuck Instagram. Then they found out all the shorties was on there. They was like, yo, you know what? I'm going to start sending these DMs, bro. <laughs> but like, so to me, I always look at these things as like, Yo, it's a medium. It's mm-hmm. not the it's not the message. Yeah, for so sure. Like, yo, how do you how do you communicate like using these things, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, but it for me, what I'm most interested in, like going like going forward, is it's kind of like I was saying earlier. Is okay now, we got the whole world at our disposal. We have we have every every everything. Like mm-hmm. like when you t- thinking about being uh, about being regional or about where your where your reference point comes from? It's like I think one time our homeboy Saint has said, um, like we actually have a conversation here inside a trade. And he was like, "Yo, our generation, we grew up with five or six crayons. These kids, they got the whole box for sure. So they're like, for them, it's like, why would I only use five or five or six crayons? And then even going back to a conversation that we had that we were having earlier this week, like you see everything that's happening right now." Where it's like you sound like Y two K early two thousands people's wearing Pele Pele jackets Ava Rex is like, yo we really lived through that hundred percent we really really lived through that so it, it's even going to be interesting like does it go through the two thousands and circle back to like the twenty twelve energy where like yo niggas like oh, are we, we gonna be wearing galaxy you no know, like print bo- everything yeah, black black and scale. The tone galaxy <laughs> like do you, like do you see a world where where that happens well I think what happens is they 
take bits and pieces from it because I think that's what's always going to happen where it's like we'll, we'll progressively go through the years. I saw somebody with an Iverson jersey on, a Nuggets Iverson jersey on and some some Reebok questions. So now I'm confused. <laughs> I didn't, I was, was like, I didn't even know we were party? pulling from there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so no. I think people are just going to pick and choose what works for them and, and just keep going from there. Like we're not going to see everything. Yeah. There's just some stuff that's not going to come back. I, no I, galaxy print? I do agree. I do think one of the things that may change the fact that people like will change the fact that what am I trying to say people won't be able to emulate or will not emulate the 2012 to now is because fast fashion became such like a center point of the last 10 years that like a lot of that galaxy shit was like trash like like yeah yeah, yeah. polo never did a galaxy print anything <laughs> you know what I'm saying or like even in the 2010s like there was yeah. still like BB or like there we were getting some like mass produced but juicy but they were different. They were like a different quality. In the last 10 years, like just the sheer number Gee. of like items, even like tribal print, like leggings, all the like stuff we wore to the clubs in the last 10 years is very different than Who's I think. We? we as a collective society. Because uh, I did not wear a Galaxy I print legging. And did not. But I did buy the Galaxy <laughs> Kobe's. But I had to. Yeah. I had to. Because they didn't make shoes, interesting shoes of my size at that time. Um, but so I feel like that's one of the things that might stop it. And right now, though, mm. isn't a... I I also feel like it's important to note that we're talking about fertile ground, right? Like a lot of what we're talking about in 2012 is just saying there was a lot of like perfect storm energy happening. For sure. And a lot of this is like just perspective. So mm -hmm. people are going to hear this, but this didn't happen in two... No, this is just like from our vantage point or our viewpoint. So don't think this is law. People get yeah. on a podcast mic and think everything is law. Nah. No, this is and just our perspective. This is our perspective. And I think it's important to share perspective because we are still trying to create fertile ground in now. For sure. Like as creatives who are in 2023 and we are still like, we're not saying we had it. In 2012, we mm -hmm. did not have anything actually. All we had was our perspective in 2012. We're 10 that's years. That's what's exciting. That's what's exciting. But yeah. even now, it's like just to think that we're still trying to understand this landscape. Like, I'm asking yeah. myself more, why do I like that? Versus you don't just see something and like it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who's fly doesn't just walk in a room and be like, yo, what's that? What do you have on? Mm -hmm. Now you see 10,000 fly people on the internet every day. But isn't it kind of crazy to be 10 years in? And I, I can speak for this. I feel like you guys feel the same way as... To still feel like we're just getting started. Absolutely. Like, it, I don't feel like it's been 10 years. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I still have so I'm excited and yeah. I want to still I feel, keep sharing I feel like I haven't done anything. Literally. Yeah. I, Literally. I, I think, though, like, the dope, I guess, like, the dope part about it is, like, if you always stay open, then you're always going to feel like you're getting started. Mm -hmm. 100%. I think that's, like, where people start to get start to get lost. Like, even, like, in the transition we were talking about earlier, uh, like say from like blog mixtapes to blog era to to this time, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people they'd be like, "Oh, I'm not changing. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that." And one thing I will say that I appreciate about like even like a lot of the artists or creatives that started in this time of 2012 is like it is the mesh of like analog and digital. Like a lot of people bridge, who, yeah. who were coming yeah, of age sure. in that in that time were people who like you know if you were like in 2012, I was 22, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're 22 at that time, 23, 24, 25, you grew up in a, you were born in a time where you didn't have internet in your house. You would, like, you had to go to the internet. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm yeah. going to the, the library or I'm going to the family <laughs> computer. Like, it wasn't disposable like yeah, that. You're a, you're a cusp baby. Yep. Yeah. And I think that is also, that also explains a lot of the transition that happened at that time. So I personally, I don't know if it's going to be possible to have that level of, of perfect storm mm -hmm. because you don't have people who understand the world in that way. Mm. I think there, I, I still think that humans will find a way to be more innovative and ask the questions we were asking then, which were really like, what do I like? How, what excites me? Like searching, th searching for things because we're at different precipices every day. Right now it's the AI into general usage. Like that's a world that, there's going to be a world before AI and there's going to be facts. a world before daily use of AI, like <laughs> yeah. after daily use of AI. There's so many different versions of that. I do think unless we start thinking critically about what digital platforms are, 
That's the difference. Like we had to make a critical decision to go on the internet, right? Yeah. And it became something that we used as a tool outside of ourselves. We didn't think it had all the answers. We learned that it had answers. We had to, sure, we had yeah. to have a relationship with We also had to media. put the answers there too. We though. had to put the answers there. Yeah. And I think the, the one thing that I think can fuck up anybody of any age, it doesn't matter if we had the internet before or not, is if you stop being critical about the relationship you have with like learning and searching for things. You either put it under that lens and That's real. and keep pushing yourself, or you start to let the machines and the algorithms tell you what it Dictate is. And stuff. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. So it has to be a two way thing, and you have to keep pursuing and wondering like what's interesting, what pushes you. So I don't know if it's gonna ever stop, but I think it'll be easier for people to get lazy, mm. and many people will. Or do and you, have. Or do you think taste will matter more going forward? Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. I, I think you'll be able to see who does and who doesn't have taste. You know, mm-hmm. I think that'll be very important down the line. And just in terms of the success of things, because taste, you can sustain that. People with no taste, it's hard. You got to bounce around and, and always be looking for True. stuff. Because that's like the person who got really different no people at the party every year. Because you know? I, I think that's an interesting thing, even when you, when, you know, even in wrapping up this conversation. Sure. But looking back at, at 20, like to me, 2012 it did usher in a new level of taste like to to our mainstream culture right mm-hmm. and i think the biggest thing that that i tie to that is instagram mm-hmm. right? right and right now even if you look at like the platform differences between instagram and say like tiktok mm-hmm. like just the experience of of being on those things is yeah. like yo like how how does this thing dictate taste mm-hmm. how do mm-hmm. how do people communicate with how this how does it raise our taste level how does it raise our yeah. Does I, it at all? I, I, think, <laughs> like, I think a lot of people, you know, this is my opinion here, but I feel like a lot of people ended up getting taste by force almost. No. Where it was like a rising you, tide. We, 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 no, we got to see yeah, we got to see, you know, what you like. So now mm-hmm. you can look at other people's paper. You have frames of references where you can pull from I like that. I like this. Mm-hmm. I like this. And you can kind of create your own and, and I, I yeah. think aesthetic. That yeah. was the, the I think a thing. lot of times I think that was the birth of the aesthetic. <laughs> I think a lot of times though, we we talk about it as a negative thing. Mm-hmm. Like people like oh it's like, oh, like, oh, people wasn't sneakerheads before this, or people weren't into fashion before this. You know, sure. like that's For like sure. the general conversation. But then sometimes I think But I think it's more of the intention. i mm-hmm. like is it is it genuine? And I think that's that's where a key you, word. You, you've got to find the balance Facts. of where like, okay, I really just didn't know. Mm-hmm. Or it's just like I can't miss out. I can't be not a part of this. So right. that's why I like it. And that's I think that's where the 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 negative thing comes Absolutely. from where you're not understanding if it's are you genuine about this mm-hmm. or not and now you're in my way because I'm genuine about it for sure but you're Dog. just now there's six of people in front of me that I'm like <laughs> but none of y'all even care about this for sure that's the frustrating part with the intent and that's why I think all this comes back down to it's intention it's actually like questioning our relationship with these things but She's what were deep. you saying no no like what Hill just said about intention mm-hmm. is that's like for me. I think I think it's good that the taste level has been raised because of these things. But I think that goes to the, even the, some of the questions that you were having or comments that you were making was, yo, it is it is about intention. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of look at it sure. as like this last ten years. It was like the output was like IKEA, mm. right? Where it's like if you think about this shit, yo, IKEA got like they mass produced furniture that looks. That Perfected looks, aesthetics in the last decade. For and, sure. and you know, like you would just go there and be like, I'm gonna have something that that just looks dope. It's not a, gonna last. It's gonna be put together janky. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that, but like when I think about it in that way, it's like, yo, all of these companies, they tapped into these different creators that came from like if you think about like Nike, like, yo, they had they had the Kanye's and then you have the Virgils come after that, you have Jerry Lorenzo's come after that, you have sure. all these people that they've Collectively, ra- risen the taste level across the board at all these di- at all these different brands. For sure. Now, yo, what are we gonna do with it? Because because all these people came, they became the new athletes. Mm. Like a lot of, I've heard people say a lot of times that Instagram is the highlight reel. Well, a lot of these artists and these creatives have been able to use Instagram as this platform and become the new athletes. So that's that's why all this influences. It's like that. Where it is, yeah. So if the last decade was about, you know, sharpening aesthetic and being able to present things that look really good, um, I hope that Stay Silent throughout that decade has been trying to make it feel really good. 
And I think that the best part about all of this is that we're saying seeing isn't experiencing. I think that's what we got out of this conversation, too, is like, for sure, it, it's one thing to see a shift happen. It's one thing to see culture happen in different places, see musical things, see fat. It's a different thing to be experiencing it and feeling it. And I'm interested to see as this all gets more democratized and people are seeing this, like how the world continues to shift. You know, you know what, what, what worries me? What worries you? But cause like for me, like <laughs> one thing I always say is like, when you talk about experiencing stuff, like seeing is not experiencing. Mm -hmm. This is why I think smell is a very important <laughs> sense. Where is he about to take this? <laughs> no, <yo>? because, <laughs> because like one thing that I always say is like, nervous. What did 2012 I, smell no, like? I, you know, like, I, I always remember, like, when I go somewhere, like, yeah. yo, like, you know, it felt like this. It smelled like this. It was this type of temperature in that room. Word. So, like. Jay's doing grounding I practices. I don't want to know any of 2012 <laughs> party smells. No. Like, we know. went to see Bauer in 2012. I do not <laughs> no, need to know what that room smelled like. But it's interesting because. You smell is like one of the only experiences mm. that you really don't. You get. have to be there. Yeah, like you, you have to really yeah, be there. You can't tell <laughs> so, like, so I always, I always like when technology gets to that point. Like imagine, yeah. like you could watch an Instagram and story. Smell like, it. Imagine, like if in the next ten years, right? And I'm not gonna lie, that would be terrible. Yeah, yeah. but there's a lot of there's these. A lot of, yeah, yeah. I ain't even gonna get into it, but yeah. But yo, but, but a lot but, of horn dogs. But yeah. Yeah. Do that. But, yo, but think, but think about that. Like if, yeah. Yeah. like if we. We get to imagine yes, like yo, vision. we laugh at, like all right, what's your prediction for twenty thirty three? Right? Like my prediction for you didn't 20, know this was coming. My prediction for twenty thirty three yeah. is smell maybe, talk. Yo, know, maybe we'll be able to smell the function from 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 where we at. Jason. I've been in the function and didn't want to smell the function. <laughs> so I can't even imagine being on my phone. But I would say for twenty thirty three, um, <laughs> We're gonna have Bronny James on the Lakers. That's what hey. we're gonna have. <laughs> but um I, I really I, I really don't know because I, I just feel like a lot of the how do I put it? Like we're getting to a point where it's just everybody's trying to one up each other and it's like we gotta get back to just the good helping intentions. each other. But yeah, we gotta be helping people, man. And I don't I don't see anything trending towards that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's more Cash grabs and shit like that. I'm getting all deep for the intro no. and all that, but nah. For 2033, man, I have no idea. I can't even honestly predict that. I was smelling the function, no, I don't know. I don't know about that. I just, I'm like actually gonna have nightmares about <laughs> what do you, that. What do you, what do you think for 2033? Uh, I can get a better answer. Nah, I mean, I, I don't. I feel like mm -hmm. AI is gonna be so much further in 10 years and I think yeah. prob majority of the world will have internet. Like, there's still so much of the world that doesn't have internet access. Yo, we might fuck around and end up getting real hip-hop back. Like, Yo, <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> So I don't know. I feel like yeah. that AI can help democratize. I don't know. There's like positives to it. And negative. Who fucking knows? But all I know is I hope we make it 10 more years. Yeah. So as long as there's an internet, we're going to be doing something on it. <laughs> Before we get a body, can I get a, a 2012 album? Mm, favorite 2012 album? Yeah. Even like, like one or two. Honestly, mine was definitely Take Care. I feel like that's... Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. I don't know if that was 2012, but I'll give it, was. it I'll, I'll, Was it not? I don't know. Take Care? I don't care. know. I, Parks. I, 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 I won't. I won't. That's rude, I, by the way. I won't give you an album or just a record, like, but I'll know. give you a "Don't Like Remix" with Chief Keef. Fuck, okay. it was 2011. Okay, like I like that. You know, or like Mercy. Like I feel like if I had to put the energy of 2012 Word. into one song, it would be Mercy because it's like you got Two Chains, Kanye, Pusha. Big Sean, you got everything on. Yeah, it's like, like a buffet. The videos, cra like the videos, crazy. Word. You know, damn. Take care was not 2012. Yeah, I your I turn. Know, I know. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Just from where I was, I'm probably say the Yellow album. Mm. Mm. What? That was 2012. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't see that. Is the the Yellow album 2012? Because now we have to see if Hill's wrong because he made me wrong. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Make, yeah. Keep the cameras rolling. So they know I'm right. <laughs> I feel like what was mine then if it wasn't that? Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. He's right again, a Taurus. Yeah. Hold that June 21st, through. it was my birthday. Hold that follow through. <laughs> that day we had a, I had a, that was my Jordan birthday. 
Yeah. Everybody wore Jordans. Remember? <laughs> Who's wearing Jordans anyway? I had on, <laughs> but I wore the Nick Spizikes, so that was 2012. Yeah. I don't know. Album of the song, album. I'm trying to think. What Jordans 20, you wore? No, like a, a 2012 album. I was listening to Cruel Summer for sure. I was Probably. listening to, was there any R&B I was listening to in 2012? What R and B came out in twenty twelve? Unapologetic. That, was any Rihanna? Beyonce did Beyonce drop four? Beyonce dropped four in twenty twelve. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah. that was Deja Vu. I'm not going. Nah, nah, that's, they, that's party. 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 I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. That, that for me is is uh like where Beyonce is right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, musically, it's like I feel like that's where that that journey started. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for b- sure. Before that, for like. Sure. That cookout music. This, yeah, is, ele- yeah. this exactly. is elevated cookout barbecue music right here. And that's a whole. I don't even want to get we to Beyonce. Go. It'd be funny because like when people like, I really didn't like Renaissance. I was like, yeah, I don't think you can dance. So. <laughs> 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 and on that note, I understand that. Happy, uh, happy 2012 podcast. I'm glad we did this. Yeah, Hill. Where, where can they find you? Um, When's that all socials. Hill Holla H I L H O. LLA, I think that's how I spell that's it. That's it, yep. Um, you put the LA in hollow. Yeah, yeah, you feel me? But um, I was coming soon. I'm trying to get out in the next two months because I'm sick of just. What about clothes? With it. Clothes uh, awesome. next week. Yeah, we next always week. got clothes. I got some new stuff coming next week. He said he don't even know when it's dropping, but he know it just <laughs> know next week. Yeah, I just not send the cycle. It's just you know, <laughs> boom, Griffey shirt, Tyson shirt. Gonna have a good week. What what else, what else, what else? you got anything else to plug? Um, nah, man, just. Drink water, take walks, tell your people you love them, stay real. Hey, Jay, do you have anything to plug? Well, we have a 2012 themed eggs over, eggs over that's coming in June. So this, if you're listening to this at a different point, we are in June. We're talking about June 2023. But um, and if you listen to this to this in 2033. <laughs> and you smelling us we smell good as fuck (laughs) thank you all for listening we'll be back soon at stay silent pvd on all platforms yo yo, comment on youtube too man comment on youtube what you want us to smell like flame emojis all of that (laughs) facts